Welcome to part two. You should have a good understanding of what the app does by now. But for those of you who skipped part one, I'll give you a quick recap. So we're using NASA's cool public API. Just going to play with that for a bit. In particular, the NEO reports, the Near Earth Object Reports. Weekly reports of comets and asteroids and stuff like that that could potentially hit the Earth and even destroy civilization as we know it. So lots of fun. We're going to hit two endpoints of this API. One of them fetches a list of NEO summaries, near Earth object summaries, which we're going to display in a list. And the other one fetches details for a particular NEO. So let's have a quick look at the app and, and what we're, how we're displaying that information. It's nothing to get excited about. It's very minimal graphical user interface essentially using programmer uh, programmer design skills. So let's have a look at what that looks like on the simulator. Very basic UI. Press this single button on the main menu and it populates with a list of individual NEOs. And if we tap on a table cell, we get, again, this is quite terrible UI, aesthetics but hey let's just work with this so we've got grabbed two three bits of information we've got the the link for the the web page for this particular neo the name of the neo again and this one is the absolute magnitude of the near earth object whatever that means so we're going to jump to our terminal i'm using iterm as i mentioned in uh, the part one of this series you can use whatever terminal you want doesn't matter. And we're going to use Hoverfly to capture the HTTP traffic coming from our app. We will then edit this captured information and then we're going to switch Hoverfly into web server mode and use it as a mock API so we can conduct our automated testing without having to reach out to a wider network. I'm sure anybody who's tried to create automated test using Net, uh, APIs on an outside network will realize how annoyingly flaky it can be. So first of all, let's launch Hoverfly. And we're going to switch to capture mode. So now Hoverfly is behaving as our proxy. So we need to redirect all our network traffic through Hoverfly in order for us to be able to capture it. So how do we tell the app to use Hoverfly as a proxy? Well, in my opinion, the easiest way to do it is using a extension of the, U of the URL session. You'll see in the demo app that I've already written this. So what is an extension, you may ask? Well, this is a powerful and cool new feature of Swift. It's a useful alternative to inheritance. I actually cringe now when I see inheritance being used in code bases. Also, extensions are extremely useful if you want to extend the functionality of a standard component of the iOS SDK. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're extending the URL session. So we start with a convenience method. All, you, all using this convenience method means is that we can use the original URL session throughout our code as though nothing's going on. So we're kind of hijacking the use of a URL session. The rest of this is merely adding the proxy configuration to this particular instance of URL session. So you'll see here that we're using localhost. Oh, I should mention that this is both HTTP and HTTPS, just so we've got both bases covered for when we switch around later on. You can see the host we're using is localhost. And you'll also see that the port we're using is 8500. And this is the port that is stated here by Hoverfly. Now, in order for us to only use this proxy configuration when we want to, again, in my opinion, the easiest way of doing this is by creating a new target. That what we do is include this extension only in the new target. Therefore, the scheme that we use to build that target only includes this configuration for URL session. So 
go into the project, we see the current target, we see the current target and we uh, duplicate it. Easy peasy. Not for iPad. Thank you, Apple. So we'll just change the name so we know what we're doing. So we'll call it Hoverfly Capture. We should have a scheme that's been auto-created there as well. So let's just go and change the name of that as well. Now this scheme, it's not too important to share it because we're only going to be running it locally. Hoverfly Capture. One last thing before we can continue, we need to make sure that the URL extension, session extension that we created is only targeted for that new target. Here you can see it's not targeted for either. So let's apply it to Hoverfly Capture. And let's build that scheme. Okay. Is it working? Yes. So we've got the data there. Let's do a quick test to make sure that it is the proxy that's working and we can do that by switching it off. So let's hit the API again, no data. Exactly what we'd expect. So the next step now is to have a look at that recording. So we're going to fire up Hoverfly again, as we stopped it. We're going to start it in capture mode. Then we're going to hit the API a couple of times. So we've got two API calls. We've got one to get the list of NEOs, and then we've got another one to get the details for a specific NEO. Bada bing. At this point, what we're going to do is export the recording as a JSON. To prevent it recording any more, let's just stop it because we don't want to confuse things. And let's have a look at that, what that recording looks like. Here we go, recording. Uh, <laughs> that's supposed to say recording, but hey, nobody's perfect. So here we've got two API calls. You'll see it starts with response and request, which is probably not the right order, but that's how they've done it. Uh, you'll see here that you've got the query. You've got the exact match. Uh, let's see which. So this one is to get the list. And here's the response data encoded. You see it's encoded. Here's the second one. So this one should be the details. Yep. So it's grabbing the details from that API call there. Now I'm going to let you into a little secret. There's a gotcha. Now this recording is for today, as you can see here. So what we want to do is we basically just want to change these so they don't care what the um, what the exact query is. All that really matters to us now is that when we hit this endpoint, we get this response, this encoded response, and the same down here. You see, the problem was that it is sending a request for a specific date. So if you do these tests tomorrow using these um, recordings, you're not going to get the same results. I found out the hard way. So there's a top tip for you there. Let's save that. Now let's have let's set witness the magic of Hoverfly. We're going to start Hoverfly and we're going to import that recording. Recoding, should I say? So are we seeing the, all the data as we'd expect? Yes, that's all good. But is it coming from Hoverfly, you ask? Well, what can we do? We can switch off the internet. Shut down the internet. Simply by switching off Wi-Fi. And we should still be able to see the data coming in. You may notice that it's actually super fast. Oh, it's not loading this data. Why isn't it loading this data? Ah. It's not loading that data because we selected the first one. So if we select this first item, 
we should have some data. Yeah, there you go. So we've got to remember in future, only test for the first item on the list. So there you go. There's the magic of Hoverfly. It works. Bloody brilliant. However, we do have a problem here. If we want all this to run on a remote continuous integration service, we don't want the hassle of having to install all those pesky certificates on our simulator. What can we do about that? This is an easy problem to solve using the Hoverfly web server mode. So we're going to Hoverfly again. Stop it, just so we know where we're at. And we're gonna start in web server mode. And then we're gonna import the recoding recording. Boom. So that should work, yeah? Let's have a look. Ah, it's not worked. Why hasn't it worked? Well, problem is our app doesn't point to Hoverfly web server. It points to the outside network using Hoverfly as a proxy. And Hoverfly was quite cleverly hijacking the, the connection. So what we need to do now is create another target which points to Hoverfly as its, as its host. So in the demo app, you'll see that I've already created this network config. Here we go, Hoverfly testing config. The only difference is it's got a different host name, localhost and with the port. This won't work and because it's currently not got a target. Empty. So, do the same again. Easy peasy. Let's duplicate this one. Not for iPad, not important right now. And uh, we'll just name this one Hoverfly Testing. I think that's quite an appropriate name. Uh, we've got our scheme again that is created for us. Let's just rename that Hoverfly Testing 2. We want to share this one because ultimately we want to get this one up on our continuous integration service. Now we just want to make sure that the proxy configuration isn't being used in this target, which it isn't, which is fantastic. So now we've renamed the scheme. Let's just go double check to make sure that this network configuration is being used in this target, which it is now. And make sure that the old configuration isn't included in this target because there's gonna be problems if we try and compile it and run. Hoverfly is still running in the background as a web server, so everything should be hunky-dory. There we go. Again, very fast because it's not having to consult a network outside of the local machine. Remember, I, I selected that top item just to make sure that we get some data back, and it all seems to be working fine. So just to, just to verify that what is happening is what we think it is. We still don't have a connection to the internet, but we're getting data. And what happens if I stop Hoverfly and try and get that data again? Nothing, fantastic. Okay, so now we've, we come to a point where we can start doing some automated testing. So I'm gonna start Hoverfly again in web server mode. And I'm going to import the recoding recording. So we should be able to get some data. And so now we can use Xcode's XC test UI testing framework. It's quite a mouthful. So we're going to need another target. So this time instead of duplicating we add iOS UI testing bundle. That's what we need. Blah, blah, blah. Swift, yes, project, yes, test, uh, target to be tested. We need to change this to the testing target. There we go. So our test target needs to point to our testing target because that's where it is configured to use Hoverfly as our backend, our mock backend. So let's just go into make sure that here it's using, yep, there we go. There's currently one 
boilerplate test already created for us. So let's go have a look at that. So it's created a folder. Here we have oh, it's some loads of boilerplate uh, code, which we want to get rid of. God. God. Because we want clean code, remember. Don't need a teardown. Arguably, we don't really need a setup either, but we'll keep it in there just so we don't break anything and cause embarrassment. Do some indenting so you can see better. Uh, test example. Get rid of the comments. Don't need that. Right. Usually we'd use this record button, but as you can see, it's not enabled right now. And that's because the test harness hasn't been engaged. So one way of doing that is to simply run the test on this scheme. Boom. So that is going to build our test harness and it's going to run the app to be tested in the background. And then it's going to run the tests. And of course, there are no tests. Well, there is a test. It doesn't do anything. So hopefully, it should just pass. If it doesn't, I've got trouble. There we go. Now we should be able to see that we've got a record button here. So let's record. So as before, we just want to make sure that we hit those two endpoints. And remember, we've got to make sure we select the first item in the list. Otherwise, we won't get any data back. And as you can see, the code is populating in the background. Let's click on that one. And then let's just tap on a few things. So we've got anchor points in which to do our asserts. Easy peasy and stop. So we're not going to change it too much. So first of all, we want to change these last ones to assert to make sure that they exist. So rather than tap on it, just get its actual exists state. And the same with this one. Have I spelled that wrong? Do the same there. All good. Let's run the tests. Remember, Hoverfly is still running in the background. That's that mock API. And we have no internet. Bada bing. Beautiful. One last thing before we're finished. We want to make sure that we don't we're not getting false positives. So let's change that. We'd expect this to fail, would we not? Okay, let's run the test again. Oh, failed. Brilliant. That's exactly what we expected. So Let's get them passing again. So there you have it. Our first automated UI test using Xcode in conjunction with Hoverfly. So the next step is getting these tests up and running on our remote CI continuous integration service. Let's have a quick look, see what the tests are doing. And I'm going to show you how to do that in part three.